Sack five for Sammy Kidd as she uh, puts an RBI on the stat sheet for her. And now it'll be Santoro up for the Eagles. She is two for two on the day. Santoro swings and hits it over on the ground towards Strothop. This is going to be a tough play. But Stittler is able to make it for PW, and uh, Santoro does not run all that well. So Stittler had some time. Pine at her feet, made a strong throw, and that will retire the sack. We'll go to the sixth inning. Michelle Taunton will lead things off for the Plymouth White Marsh Colonials, who have seen their deficit swell to four. The Eagles have put up exactly one run, no more, no less, in every inning except the second so far. And Taunton takes it low for ball one. I mean, the Eagles have had a big threat. I mean, they've had runners in scoring position with less than two outs uh, just about every inning. And... Um, Able to make four runs out of it. Can't complain. But uh, they certainly left a ton of runners on today. That one's inside. That's ball three. So it's Michelle Taunton, the uh, right fielder, but then back to the top of the order with Corinne Watson on deck. Taunton skies it into the left, into foul territory. And Cretion, Barry, and Kidd all converge, but it it's a good two steps away from any of them. So uh, Taunton lives to see another pitch. And that one is low. Apparently, uh, that was ball three to Taunton. Here's Foster with the wind up and the pitch, and it's fouled back to the cage. Now, two strikes on Taunton. Foster lost her no-hitter, her perfect game, all that stuff, but she still has her shutout intact. She's thrown a couple of them already on the season. Another one certainly wouldn't hurt here against the conference rival as Cretion makes the play and fires over to King. Boy, Cretion's got a heck of an arm. So back to the top of the order, and Corinne Watson now. The other corner outfielder for these uh, Lady Colonials. And she steps out, calls a timeout. Still 4 nothing, Lady Eagles. We're in the top of the sixth. Plymouth White Marsh has to make something happen in a hurry if they want to come back in this game. I'm Mark Collins. You're watching Varsity Softball here on NASD TV. Cretion and the rest of the Eagles defense aligning themselves as that one's popped into the infield. Cretion puts it away. And that makes Corinne Watson, the leadoff hitter, uh, 0 for 3 on the day. Their uh, Plymouth White Marshes, 1 through 3 hitters, have combined to not get on base a single time. Hard to create some offense when that's the case. Here's Renee Stittler, who's over two. And it's inside for ball one. Stittler's had a real rough game defensively, making two errors at the shortstop position. And that one's bunted at and missed, so it's a one and one. Renee Stiller has grounded out and flied out to uh, left field and takes a ball right here. Boy, 
for Daisy Foster. Certainly looks, she's, looks like she's well on her way to another complete game shutout, but uh, still has a couple outs to be recorded. Anything can happen. Stittler pops it straight up. It's into foul territory, and it drops into foul territory. It's Gabby Berry again over there near the fence trying to make a defensive play. <laughs> Maggie Creation doing her best Gabby Berry impression as Berry kind of went over towards the fence and lost her footing. Chilly day here in May here at Narcan Area High School. And still overcast, but the rain's still holding up. Here's Foster delivering it low for a ball. Foster's been nearly flawless today. And of course, also three for three. Two for two with a walk, that is. And there's ball four to Stittler. And Renee Stittler gets on base for the first time today with a walk. That'll bring on the three-hitter and catcher, Alexa Borkowski for Plymouth the White Marsh. Borkowski, just like Stittler, has grounded out and flown out to Sammy Kidd. Foster with the first pitch of the at-bat, and it's fouled back to the cage. It's 0-1-1. Two outs, runner on first. That is Stittler with decent speed over that first. And that's ball one. It's one and one. So just four outs to work with now for Plymouth White Marsh, and they've got to create four runs out of it. Again, it's Daisy Foster, who's been on point today. I'm Mark Hodinski. You're watching NASD TV. Once again, that score is 4 nothing as Daisy Foster is four outs away from a complete game shutout. And uh, Gina Pleccio has a pair of RBI uh, to be the offensive star thus far in this game. That one smacked into foul territory and off of a car out there in foul territory. That's got to hurt. But staying alive is Alexa Borkowski. Foster with the 2-2 two -two pitch. Very low and gets away, so uh, Stittler will be able to take second. Makes a big turn, but she'll stay right there. And that'll run the count full. Foster with the 3 2 offering, and it is low. So, the second walk of the inning given up by Daisy Foster, and the third of the game as Borkowski gets on base. And now Plymouth White Marsh with two outs trying to dip into this four run deficit as they have runners on first and second. Meeting at the mound as Taylor Coves that comes out, the infield will converge, and they'll talk about uh, how they want to approach Tori Baratucci and perhaps just try to. Uh, get Daisy Foster right mentally uh, as, you know, she hasn't really had a lot of base runners in this game. So, again, just like uh, when she ran into a little bit of trouble in the last inning, you know, you just want to make sure that a couple of base runners doesn't throw her off and take her off of what she's doing because uh, that's the last thing you want to do when she's pitching this kind of a game. So the meeting on the mound is a brief one. Stittler, the runner on second. Borkowski, the runner at first. Foster on the mound. Trying to work on a shutout. She's four outs away, but again, two base runners on here with uh, Tori Baratucci, the cleanup hitter, uh, at bat. Taps it foul off the plate. It's 0-1. Baratucci is 0-1 uh, today with a strikeout and a walk. 
lined down the third base line. Fair. There goes the shutout for Daisy Foster as they throw behind the runner, but the throw gets away. So Alexa Borkowski, as they try to throw behind her at second base, will take third on the errant throw. Tori Baratucci on at first with an RBI single. That one was rocketed down the third base line, and coming in to score was Renee Stittler. And it is a 4-1 to one game with runners on the corners and two outs. Daisy Foster just needs to settle down here and get this last out. Carly Nozick takes it a little bit outside for a ball. Nozick fouls it back, and it'll be one and one. Curly Nozick uh, grounded out to second base in her last at bat. She is 0 for 2 on the day. A lot of 0 for 2s up and down this PW lineup. As Daisy Foster really only ran into trouble in the fifth and the sixth. Uh, one through four didn't allow a single base runner. But as the game's going on, I guess PW's either kind of figured her out, or maybe Daisy Foster's worn out, worn down a little bit. Perhaps some combination of, of the two. Either way, uh, she just needs to finish this one out. had good offensive support. The Eagles left a lot of the runners on base all game. But uh, four runs, can't complain. That's a solid offensive performance through, uh, through five innings of offense. Curly back in. Foster delivers, and it's outside for a ball. Dance around over there at first base is uh, Tori Baratucci, trying to distract some of the attention of defense, distract some of the attention of Daisy Foster. And of course, the runner on third is Alexa Borkowski. Carly Nozick up right now represents the tying run. And that one is inside for a ball. That is three and one now to Carly Nozick. PW showing some signs of life here in the top of the sixth. Something they haven't really done all game. That one's shot out into deep left field over the head of everybody. Baratucci rounding third. She'll score. Borkowski has already scored. Rounding third and coming and actually holding up at third is Carly Nozick. Carly Nozick with a Two RBI triple to bring PW to within one, and now she represents the tying run, and she's standing out there on third base with two outs. So John Kendrick now out there to join this meeting with Daisy Foster. Wow, that was a shot out there by Carly Nozick, way over the head of Sammy Kidd, who had to go out there and retrieve it. And uh, Alexa Borkowski and Tori Baratucci coming around to score uh, the second and third PW runs of the game. And now the Eagles are in some serious trouble. Daisy Foster has absolutely has to get Katie Wacker out now. Katie Wacker is uh, one for two. She reached on a butt base hit in her previous at bat. This game's suddenly grown very intense, very wild. Wacker holds off, and it is a ball high, 1-0. and Four to 4-3, the Eagles lead. Two outs here at the top of the sixth with Katie Wacker trying to knock in that tying run, Carly Nozick from third. That one's on the corner for strike one. It's 1-1. One and one. Boy, 
are two very contrasting ways of getting to where they are. It's PW scoring all three of their runs here in the top of the sixth. Uh, Narsan's four runs all scattered throughout the first couple of innings as Gabby Vera comes into field. The bunt throws low, and it's dug out by Stephanie Dinolfi, and they record that third and final out. Big defensive play there, and Foster able to strand the tying run on third base, and we will go to the bottom of the sixth. It's 4-3 Eagles. Taylor Copes to lead things off for the Lady Eagles here in the bottom of the sixth, and she takes it inside for ball one. Kopsik is uh, 0 for 1 on the day, but she has walked, and now you see how important it is for the Eagles to get some insurance runs, as they're kind of cruising with that 4 nothing lead, uh, with Daisy Foster just dominating as Kopsik chops it over to first, and it's taken to the bag by number 48, Carly Nozick, who uh, was huge in that... Uh, Top of the sixth with that two RBI triple to deep left field. But, um, yeah, imperative for the Eagles to tack on some runs because, yeah, that four run lead with Daisy Foster pitching the way she was looked untouchable. But uh, it just shows that PW was sticking around in that game, stranding a lot of Eagles runners on base, just sticking around as that one's chopped by Denolfi. She'll hustle down the line, but be thrown out easily. So that is quickly two down for the Lady Eagles. And we'll go back to the top of the order with Maggie Cretion, who's one for three on the day with a stolen base and an RBI. So uh, in the top, or in the, yeah, in the top of the seventh, it'll be the last chance for PW. Eagles hopefully will make it more than a one-run lead that they'll have to overcome. But uh, whatever it is, it'll be um, Miller leading it off for the... Um, PW Colonials as she delivers the Cretion low for a strike. It'll be Miller, Jordan Katz, and Michelle Taunton. They have combined to go 0 for 6 today. 0 for 9, excuse me. And that one is a called strike to Cretion. 0 for 6, I was right the first time. Uh, as each of them have had two at bats, and all of them have been out two times. All the damage by PW as Cretion chops it over second base, but it's dropped out there. And Cretion will reach on the air as uh, second baseman Jordan Katz will be charged with the error. So Cretion, one for four, but she reaches base on the air. And, um, yeah, all of PW's damage offensively has been done by the four, five, six hitters, the middle of the lineup. The top of the order has done absolutely nothing, one through three. The bottom of the order has done absolutely nothing, seven through nine. Uh, meanwhile, Naristown really scattered all throughout their offenses. They've, uh, you know, have good performances up and down the lineup. They've scored in four different innings. Of course, PW only scored in one inning, but they're down by only one. It's 4-3, and I'm Mark Kodlinski. You're watching NASD TV. Lady uh, Eagles on top of the visiting Plymouth White Marsh Colonials today in a big interconference game. Here's Kluth showing bunt, now taking it away, and taking a called strike. Cretion's a huge threat to steal. Like we said, she already has one on the day. Maggie Cretion is one of those players you just love to have on your team. Uh, great defensively, great running the bases, pesky leadoff hitter. Uh, just the, the perfect perfect fit for this, this leadoff spot. That one's bobbled out there by Stittler, and that's that could be scored a hit or an error either way, but uh, Stittler continues to struggle out there mightily at the shortstop position. I mean, it would have been a close play had she come up with it, just because of the, uh, the speed of Sherilyn Kluth, but... Um, I mean, I'm thinking that's an error, and if it is, that's number three on the day for Stittler. She's 0 for 2 at the plate as well. And now the Eagles threatening to add some insurance runs. Foster shows butt, but takes it away, and... The 
Daisy Foster, who is two for two on the day with a walk. She's been on all three times, and of course, all three times, Shannon Melito has pinch ran for her, two of which she has come around to score. Foster lines it into right field for a base hit. Cretion, even with that speed, has to hold up at third because that ball was absolutely smoked. But uh, that'll load up the bases for the Eagles. Two outs, though, is remember, Cope Stick and Donoffy led off this inning with back-to-back -back outs. But uh, Cretion reached on an error, Kluth reached on an error, and now Foster with her third hit of the day. She's on base for the fourth time. Not to mention what she's done on the mound, although um, you know it's certainly taken a s slight downturn here in the past couple of innings. But still, in the grand scheme of things, six innings pitched, three runs, not too bad, and uh, three outs away from getting a W. So here's Gabby Berry. She'll take a pitch and line into center. Wacker coming up throwing. And the uh, Lady Eagles go station to station as uh, they will bring in Cretion, who scores. Everybody moves up one. Kluth to third. Melito to second. And Gabby Berry on with an RBI single. That will bring up Gina Paleccio, who has uh, two RBI. Had an RBI single down the third baseline back in the first. And also a sack fly in the third. She's also flown out. Pelletio nearly hit instead inside for ball one. The 1-0 pitch from Miller. It's popped up into foul territory and out of play. Erica Miller has... Uh, been in the game the entire time for uh, the PW Colonials and um, hasn't been a disaster but has allowed a lot of base runners but fortunately able to strand a lot of people and uh, given up five runs through uh, five and two-thirds thus far. Now it's poked up the middle. There's another base hit. Everybody's going to move up one more and it's six to three Eagles. RBI single. Gina Pluccio, her third RBI of the game. Sherry Lynn Kluth comes in to score. Base is still loaded now, still two outs. All of this done with two outs. Bases were empty with two outs uh, when Cretion got it all started. 